and the town's very big on rebuilding, bringing back the downtown. I'm like, you know, if we keep doing that, shoot, I don't know. I, I feel like we could maybe own the whole town someday. But if I ever get the chance to like bring back a town, I'm going to do it. What's the population of the town? Just out of curiosity, give us some um, scope. It's like 27,000. Not big. It's yeah. not a big town. Yeah, yeah. But that, so it just gives us some scope of the project and maybe what you're doing. You know, there's an interesting strategy that a friend of mine uh, employs. He calls it buy the line, move the line. And what he means by that is he buys the furthest, you know, like he'll buy the, the outer edge of any given region where across the street is kind of crap. But he then takes the street on the other side, ups it, and then it just can kind of it ripples out. So in other words, he buys the line, rebuilds, moves the line. And what you've just described really is the, you know, you went downtown over the course of the of the year, even because of your own development was part of the, the reason that property value started to escalate. You probably have got some enthusiastic uh, council, uh, city council members that are going, oh, yeah. this is cool. You know, oh, they, get, yeah. they support you. And the next thing you know, you're starting to see property values increase. Was there something else? And just curious, it's it's the, you know, kind of the economic part of me that kicks into gear. And, and was there a economic shift in that particular region or in that city? Was there a business that or a big company that came in? What was kind of driving it economically that maybe changed in the past year? So Clinton, Iowa, back in the day, they used to have more millionaires that lived here in Clinton because they were all lumber barons. So mm. like back in the day, the river's here, there's a railroad track along the river, and they were all wealthy from lumber. And then mm. the downtown was like popping, bubbling, like the Sears, the J.C. Penney, all the things. But then um, out here, out of town, that you know the land expanded they put out a casino and then they put out a walmart and they put out the restaurants and people left the downtown and went out here so in this downtown it's an opportunity zone so you know if you own the buildings for 10 years you don't have to pay any capital gains they have grants upon grants upon grants that are available you know just here's the money and to to do the outside of the buildings and they're just working very hard to get this town to be like a little Mecca where everyone goes down to eat and drink and shop and antique and spend the weekends you know, on the downtowns. They they do uh, every Thursday night in the summer now, they close off the street and they have live bands. And, you know, that started off with five or 600 people. And last year they had like 2,000 people mm. coming down in this little three block area, dancing in the streets, listening to music. And we're, you know, a major sponsor of all of those things. And they're doing uh, so they're just all these things so we were like you know it's a it's a downtown it's an opportunity zone and at the end of the day if we own everything for 10 years and and the town never like fully pops back around we could probably still sell everything and make a profit or put some businesses or just whatever but uh things are making a big turn and you can just every time we come we can see a little bit more a little bit more a little bit more and now there's bigger events coming and um, there's two old hotels that just got bought for like $20 million each. They're making them all full of lofts. There's some factories, there's a college that a Japanese company bought, and they're just, they're going to put car, make cars. And there's just things coming in, and the area is expanding. And we're like, you know what? We're going to be a pivotal part of that. And so far, so good. So, you know, we have no guarantee it's going to work. We don't know. We just thought, eh, we can do this. Why not? Like, why not? We can do this. So I'm curious, you know, when you look at a project like that, and I think there's some real value in kind of just looking at it through your eyes, Bill's eyes. So you're in this town. Are the, you know, what, what did you just get curious or was there some, what was kind of the compelling, I don't know, why did you look at it and say, let's take this on or let's look into this more? What was the what was the curiosity that drove you to even doing the investigation? Did you look at the old buildings and go, you know, some of these would be really cool just if they were restored? Or were you starting to see where the city was saying, hey, listen, you know, if you're interested, we got stuff, stuff going on. Like what was the again, what was that kind of compelling 
curiosity so, and, that got you going? You know, it's a it's a good question. So we um, both go back to all of our high school reunions. And Bill's High School, every five years, they have faithfully have a reunion and like 100 people show up. So we were coming every five years. So we came when we were dating and then like at the five, the 10 year, the five years and the next five years, like five years into our marriage. The next one's like 10 years into our marriage. The next one, we're like 15 years into our marriage. I'm like, you know, every time we come here, they meet at these places and it's like the downtown is half of it's boarded up and it's just, it's so cute. And there's like one little person bought a building and put a little antique store in and someone bought a little thing over here, but there's all this boarded up stuff. I'm like, you know, if the right people came, they could get all the boards off, get all the buildings restored, and this could become like a popping thing. Mm -hmm. And the reason we thought that is uh, we have a house in Florida in Delray Beach, Florida. Now, mm -hmm. Delray Beach, I have had a house in Delray Beach for the last 25 years. And Atlantic Avenue, which is like, it's just called the Avenue now. It was like ghetto. It was boarded up. There was nothing. And these two gay guys opened up this little art gallery and a restaurant next to it. And I mean, it was the hood, like the hood. And I was like, I love that. So I would go there because I had bought a house in Delray and it was cheap, but it was on the water, but it was still kind of a ghetto. And then these two guys had someone opened up a place across the street and then like it kept, it started building. And over the course of the last 15 years, from the interstate to the beach, which is about a mile and a half, it is nothing but shopping and stores and restaurants. And they branch out all the way. And it's now like one of the most popular cities in the state of Florida. And I watched that happen. And I bought two little tiny commercial buildings that were like old houses that were like some light commercial. And I bought those and I bought a house in there and I watched it happen. I thought, man, if I ever had a chance to do something like that, because at the time I didn't have like, I don't think I had that big enough of a mindset 20 years, 25 years ago when I bought my house to do that. I thought if I ever get the chance to like bring back a town, I'm going to do it. And all those years went by. I met Bill. We got married or 15 years in and we're like, hey, you know what? This downtown looks just like it used to look on Atlantic Avenue. Let's take on this project. So we did. I love that. And that's really big vision stuff. Are you, uh, are you driven by goals? Do you, you know, you talked about, you know, you, you know, think about it one day, you know, you, and I, and I say this just because you made that comment, you know, one day I'm going to rebuild or build a city or whatever the comment was. And it, it just lends the, to me asking the question, you know, are you driven by goals and outcomes or are you pretty much a big, vision thinker and then shit just unfolds like how is it for you uh, i am a very much a big vision thinker and so like going back to the florida when they were buildings for sale on that street i was like oh man that's really in the hood i don't think i could do that but i'm also only you know seven or eight years into my real estate investing journey and I don't think I had a big enough mindset, like, well, why can't I do that? Someone's mm -hmm. doing it. I'm literally watching it. And now I look at the whole thing. It's like, golly, everything down there is just worth millions and millions of dollars. And so I just, as it kept building every year, I thought, you know, I wish I would have kind of got in on some of that because it looked fun. But I don't think I had a big enough thinking yet because I was still doing single family houses and little duplexes. And, you know, I was still kind of over in this box. And then my time Bill and I started coming here, I'm in the box of like, well, we just try it. Like if it doesn't work, we can sell the buildings. And the same thing like with investing, I can start or I can get a job. We're like, ah, let's just try it. What's the worst that will happen? We'll bring out the property values and we'll sell them or we'll keep them. We don't know. We're going to try and see what happens happens. So I think now I just think so big, I don't even consider that I would fail. Like it never has even occurred to us that it won't happen the way we plan for it to. People are like, oh my gosh, aren't you scared? And I'm like, no, I, I'm honestly, I'm not scared at all. I, the fact that I own 28 parcels in this little area, I should probably be terrified. But I'm like, no, because I can do it. 
the people will come. We're going to do it. We've got the mindset. We've got the courage. We've got the money. We don't, we're kind of like jump out of a plane and, you know, figure out the landing on your way down kind of people. So it's mm -hmm. like, why not? Like, why not? So because you mentioned it, when you look at the money side of it, that's what gets in most people's way. So when you look at the dollars and cents side of it, did you bring in capital partners to support it? Was it just you being able to take existing portfolio and leverage equity? How did you kind of capitalize this size of a project? So, <laughs> so it started off, we were just going to buy like two buildings.